I have my second batch of plaster ready, uh, and I mixed it good and thick because all I'm doing is I am reinforcing the side walls here. I have a layer over everything already. I'm just kind of scraping it off of my hand up against the wall in order to build up a good thickness on that wall. I'm going to have to pry against those walls in order to get this mold free, get the two pieces apart. I need a lot of strength from this because I got to, you know, literally stick screwdrivers down in there and use hammers to get these guys apart. So you want a good thick wall. And once again, I'm trying to get a lot in my hand and make a little trough and let it flow out as I go over the surface. Because I'm not using any burlap reinforcement, I don't have any fabric mesh in here or anything to strengthen this mold, I don't want any part of it to be less than half an inch thick. And again, I'm mixing it thick, so that means I'm going to have less time with it. Also, there's, I did not clean the bucket out 100%, so there's partially kicked plaster in the bucket already, which is going to help the other stuff kick off. This is a little bit soupier than my last batch, but that's okay. It's going to thicken as I go. And this is going to be real good for a polishing layer, just to cover everything and to get everything nice and smooth. Over here behind my table, I have a bucket of water. Um, I use this bucket of water to wash my hands off when I need my hands clean because you don't ever want to wash plaster into your drain because it will turn to a rock inside of your drain and destroy your plumbing. I have lost several security deposits in gaining that knowledge, so now I pass it on to you hoping to save you $400 plus first and last month's rent. This is the largely completed mask mold. You can see how much thicker, how much it has built up on this side as opposed to that side with plaster. You come around here. I've already taken a couple of my supports off because the plaster that dried earlier supported it. Around here, you can see one of the clay buttresses that I put on to help hold that wall up while I was forming it. And you can get a good idea just how thick that mold is. My plaster is kicking, and all I'm doing is I'm using my hand to smooth out any rough spots. Okay? Because right now, it's no big deal. But when plaster hardens, these can get really jagged. And I don't want any jagged pieces on the mold to cut me while I'm having to work with the mold or move it around. You can spray water on it right now to help you smooth it out because that will reactivate the plaster just a little bit. Some people would put another coat on the mold and make sure that that one is just super smooth. So the other side is, uh, this first side is kind of still kicking, but I can start on the other side because I know what's up against the wall is really dry. All right, it might be a little bit green on the back side, but what's up against the wall that I'm gonna work with right now is really dry. I have a tiny hammer and what I'm doing Along the mold wall, some plaster has just gone over the edge. Alright, so I'm just 
breaking off that plaster to make sure that it's clear so when I pull the mold wall off I don't have jaggedness bugging me for the second half I'm going to remove uh, the clay I'm going to look at the sculpt see if anything is damaged doesn't look like it was top of the head is normally pretty easy to get the wall off of uh, and you can see the circles from where I carved for keys. This one came off nice and easy. Uh, they don't always do that, but I kind of let it sit the right amount of time. Um, it's nice to use two different kinds and two different colors of clay for your mold wall and your sculpt so that removing them later is easy. And I have a little bit of a lip that hangs over here. I don't want that. So I'm going to take something metal like uh, the edge of a hammer. I'm using this flat part right here and I'm just going to run it along that plaster edge that's kind of sticking over. That's where that little wall was. You can see that I'm going to make the other half of the mold now over on this side. Okay, It's going to cover up this portion. So to keep that plaster from sticking to this plaster, I got to use a release. Thinking ahead, I'm going to want to pry these two apart. Pry points will allow me to separate one half from the other by giving a place where plaster does not go and where I can slip a screwdriver into when I need to pry this guy apart. I let it overhang the back side because that holds it on and then I push it down onto the wall like so. Just enough to get a screwdriver in. The tab on the back lets me find it when the mold is closer to done because that gets harder as all that's covered up with plaster. Yes, I'm going to need a mold release for this, and I'll do that in a minute, but sometimes if you do the mold release before your pry points, they don't want to stick. My five pry points, and I'm going to go ahead and mold release with the cooking spray the wooden base again, the table, and the mold wall. I kind of want to brush it in and get it up there behind the ears and in those hard spots because I do not want to miss a piece. This, the mold release, is what makes this a two-piece mold. I'm also getting some on the brush and I'm hitting these eyes in here because that's bare plaster. Don't forget that. But I want to hit this overlap also. Because I'm going to be painting and brushing plaster on, it could go over the top and lock on top even though it's released in between. I'm going to be liberal with that. Because I do I have a lot of detail up under the teeth, up into the eye socket a little bit that I don't want to lose. If I just paint plaster on, I could easily get an air pocket in there. So I'm going to lay this down on its back. I have a shop towel that I'm just going to make kind of a donut with back here. Now, because it's laid on its back, I can just paint plaster in here and it'll go into this detail and stay. Because this is a first batch on this side, I want to go back to a pancake batter-like consistency. Okay. Okay, I have my pancake batter mixed up here, which is really plaster. It's not really pancake batter. 
and I'm getting my bubbles out right now. Get a brush, we'll get going. I really like to start on the face because I want it while it's the most liquid. Because the longer it sits here, it's getting thicker and thicker. While it's the most liquid, I want to try and capture the detail in the mouth. I want to make sure it goes around every tooth. That jiggling that I'm doing, this right now, this is what's called a Newtonian fluid. Um, it has properties of both a solid and a liquid. So when I jiggle it, I remind it that it's a liquid and it flows, even though it's kind of like sludge. And right now I've gotten really thick. I can hit this with water. Like this deep valley right here, I don't want that in between layers. Because in between layers, that'll harden, and then that's an easy spot for an air bubble to be. An air bubble will be very easy to exist or pop up there. I don't want that. So I'm using the water to smooth out and even out the surface a bit. So Ultra Cal 30 is supposed to take 30 minutes to kick. That's where it got its name. Um, this didn't because it's really hot. I used hot water and I didn't use the cleanest bucket in the world. Okay? Clean bucket, cold water buys you more working time. I've done this. So, this is just the way that I do it. Other people, I'm sure, will insist on using the burlap. Other people, I'm sure, um, insist on having a perfectly smooth mold. That's just not a big concern to me. I need a functional mold. Taking a brush, a little bit of water, just smoothing out this mold. This side I'll smooth down pretty good. You can use a piece of burlap. Uh, I'm just using a shop rag. And I'm just kind of polishing it. Alright, your job is to catch this. If I get it free and clear, mm -hmm. to keep it from rolling off because a broken mold is a useless mold. Have a collection of flathead screwdrivers. My pry points that I put on it, remember I put on five. Alright, right there's one. I got one up here. I got one right there. And the reason why this isn't sticking is because I went ahead and pammed that edge. That makes life much easier. 
I've got a little hammer here. Um, this was just a broken hammer, but they actually sell broken hammers now called stubby hammers. Uh, I just like them because I don't generate too much force when I'm working with the plaster. This is my pry point on top of the head. I'm going to go ahead and, because that's just clay right there, I've given myself a bit of a spot. As I drove that in, you can see a little crack is forming that is now running all the way down. I can grab a second screwdriver in my next pry point and that is splitting even more. I'm going to go for a third screwdriver. Now it is splitting so much that this is barely hanging in there and this one is really loose. When I pry this apart, all right, if I pry both in the same direction, I'm putting too much torque on this plaster edge and I could just break this edge off. So I want to push one this way and pull one this way. And I don't want a lot of pressure, I just want to go until I see a little bit of movement. All right, I see a little bit of movement. I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna go over to this side where it's opened up. Just put in my screwdrivers. And now I should be able to go up top. And now I don't need pry points because I can go in anywhere just about and get the distance that I need. I'm not going straight in because I don't want to damage the edge of the mold inside. I'm going at an angle so I'm prying from wall to wall. Front half of the mold has come off. Front half of the mold came off. My wooden disc that the mask was on is off. And that's it. Look, we're twins. Because I used Pam as a release, because I used pry points, this came apart pretty easy. Now my job is to get the clay out of the mold. And I'm just going to peel as much as I can by hand. This is water-based clay, so I can power wash this out because the water will melt away the, uh, the clay. And this is the part that's kind of a pain in the butt. The more intricate your sculpt is, the harder this will be. You do not want to use a metal tool to pry the clay out because metal is stronger than plaster, which means you will scratch your mold. Uh, you can use wooden tools. Um, I use the, the barbecue skewers. There's a pack of 100 for a dollar at the dollar store. I use those all the time for cleaning out molds. Get to work, Kyle. <laughs> uh, quick tip for removing clay. Often I will have a pack of popsicle sticks and I can cut a custom digging shape in the end of one with just a pair of scissors to dig clay out. When it messes up, I throw it away. But this is really nice for digging detail clay out of the mold. Kyle has a toothbrush and he is cleaning out his uh, side of the mold. I use the heat gun to bend the back of the toothbrush back so you can get a better angle for hitting molds. So, regular old toothbrush. I just have mine full of water because I have the face and I am just getting layer by layer of clay off until it's thin enough to wash off with a hose. After a hose treatment, Kyle's half is pretty clean. He's doing the final brushing. And uh, mine, I have some deep areas and where the detail is, you know, the teeth are still in there. I got to pull them out and the chin, eyebrows, nose. But it's coming. Almost clean. The two halves of the mold separated. 
and fully cleaned thanks to the hose and uh, some picking dents that we put on the first half have of course become nubs on the second half all right and they fit together and that is the mold fit together there is a strap that I would use to strap it together start to finish that's a mask mold